You just said a moment ago that you said to your two boys, you need to be closer than you are to me because I won't be there all the time. That's a bit surely tongue in cheek. You said something very profound when you were young. Your dad asked you what you wanted to do, most of all, and you said you wanted to be a father. Uh, and so you, I think, understand just how important fathers are. We've got a, right across the West, but in your country, a boy crisis. I mean, it's just extraordinary. One in four children now growing up with only no father figure in the home, let alone their biological father. Um, often uh, father figures are the butt of jokes in the media uh, and in comedies they're sent up as, you know, hopeless, hapless dad, men are useless, Homer Simpson. What have we done? Why have we destroyed the idea of fathering so much? You know, one, we've allowed it, right? So one is we've allowed it where we laugh at the jokes, which is not funny to be laughing at. There's certain jokes when I, you know, I'll say, I'm sorry, I, what are we laughing at? That's not funny. What, what are we doing laughing at this joke here? This is not a funny joke. I really get that. Yeah. And so we are, we have joined the yeah. becoming the laughing stock. So we contributed towards that. Yeah. For example, let's just say we're sitting here having a conversation. Yes. And I say all of a sudden something like, you know, uh, uh, whatever comment I make about anything, you know, uh, people are horrible, you know, women are this, men are this, and, you know, I start making fun of a certain community, whether it's ethnicity, background, and you laugh at it. You just supported me. He laughs at it. You just supported me. He laughs at it. Yeah. You guys just gave me validation for my verses. You may say, yeah, I don't think I agree with you on that. I don't feel the same way. We have to say that, and we're not saying that. We're becoming too much of conformity, too much of having to agree with everybody. And we're afraid of this uh, discourse. We're afraid of debate. We're afraid of going out there. You said something very interesting when I think Jordan Peterson asked you in an interview about what's going on, what's the right approach. If you had to do it all over again, what would you do? And you said, I think it's a little bit arrogant for me to give counsel on what to do when I'm not on the inside. But what I can say is we need discourse. We need debate. You're absolutely right when you told that to Jordan Peterson. We're afraid of this debate, this discourse. So when, when a lot of these ideas about father figures is being pitched and is being sold, if we laugh at it, we're part of the problem. If we go see it, we're part of the problem. Now, I love comedy. I love sense of humor. I'm a prankster myself. I think that has to be part of our life because we enjoy having fun, all of that. But, uh, you know, again, the, the, the selling of the hero, if you reshape and sell a new hero to people, Kids are going to want to be that when they're growing up. Hero growing up to me was a man named Luther al that He died two years ago. He was the reason why I became a businessman. We'd go to his house once a year. He had a house in Upland, 7,200 square feet. And he was a strong father, but his kids were around him. They loved him. He would impose. He would poke. He would get his 30, 40, 50-year-old kids debating on why God doesn't exist or Money's not that important and why drugs are not that bad. And then he would flip it on him. God does exist. Money's very important. You know, and, and then we'd be like, what is wrong with you, dad? And it was, you know, they're always debating. This guy built a business. They love him. Was with his wife till she died at 90 years old. And then he died a couple years later after his wife died. Raised kids that had great grandkids. And I'm looking, I'm like, you know what? This is a hero. This is who I want to be one day. I want to be, he drove a Jaguar. He always had a Cadillac. His brothers working with him, his family was around him. He was admired, he was feared, he was respected. That to me was a heroic figure in my eyes, right? That today is a greedy man. That is not a heroic figure. Today, the capitalist that went from having nothing to building a business, creating jobs for thousands of people is a bad man. Today, that person is a greedy man. Today, that person is selfish. Today, that person, all he cares about is his Lambo, his Ferrari, his Rolls Royce, his nice watch, his nice cars. That's all he cares about. He's a selfish man. That's a bad man, right? And you know, today, a father that sticks around and is challenging his kids, pushing his kids, imposing on them to become stronger, tougher, you're too tough on them. What's wrong with you? Why are you so militant? You don't, you're not a really good dad. You're not a really good this. These are my kids. I chose to have these kids. My wife and I decided to have these kids. These are my responsibilities. So again, the hero-making machine is a problem. The capitalist is a villain. It used to be a hero. The father staying home raising his kids was a hero. Today's a villain. The person that's going out there doing the right things today, it's, it's become so confusing. So the better of a job you and I do, well, you're raising kids, I'm raising kids, we're fathers, you were telling stories, 
about your daughter. You, you know, a minute ago, you saw my six-year-old daughter. Whoever I sell as a hero, they're going to admire that person. You know, they're going to say, wow, this is who a hero is. That, that tells me this person is a hero because they solved the problem, because they went against the odds, because they wanted to do some, you know, they were great leaders. They made great choices. They made great decisions. I look up to this person. But if I sell a victim as a hero to constantly feel sorry for everybody all the time, you want me to always feel sorry for everybody? When we were kids and people would come and drop off stuff because we were poor, we were a welfare kid, they would drop off turkey. Never liked that. I never liked that. I never liked people feel sorry, sorry for me. It was a quality my dad said, never let people feel sorry for you. You can do something about it. Today it's become cool to allow other people to feel sorry for me. No. I understand you're helping out. I salute you. Thank you so much for your, you know, charitable wanting to help out the family while we're going through tough times. I appreciate it. But I'm going to make a promise to you. This is the last time you're going to have to bring turkey to us because you don't need to do that for me. You got to do that for your family. It's my job to do it for my family. We need to, we need to recognize that. And, and I just don't think we're doing that. So we confuse a lot of people.